we just had the Monaco Grand Prix in Formula One. It was a lot of fun. Rain made it interesting. There was a long rain delay. I record every – anytime I watch a football game or watch a race or a basketball game or whatever, I record it and start about an hour late. That way, if there's a lot of commercial breaks, I can skip ahead. Or if there is a long rain delay, like in Formula One today, I can skip ahead. So that that approach to watching sports that way really paid off for me. I don't know how it felt for normal people watching, but I loved what I saw. I didn't have any long delays. I skipped ahead of those and – what I saw and what I loved was that Monaco is a, a track that needs a twist to make it interesting. It's hard to have overtakes. It really depends on um, qualifying. And wet conditions in Monaco gave us some really good, really interesting drama. So Sergio Perez got first. Carlos Sainz got second. Max Verstappen got third. Charles Leclerc got fourth. George Russell got fifth. Lando Norris got sixth. Fernando Alonso seventh. And... The last noteworthy guy, in my opinion, Lewis Hamilton, got eighth. The two biggest stories from Monaco were Checo, Sergio Perez, and Ferrari. Let's start with Checo. I was just praising Sergio Perez last week, saying he needs appreciation. Um, he's really underrated and underappreciated with how well he's doing for Red Bull. He got the appreciation this week. He won Monaco. Like, oh my goodness. I'm so happy for the guy. I love seeing him win. And... Man, the final 10 minutes of this race, watching Checo Perez try to hold off Carlos Sainz behind him as his tires were graining. Oh, my gosh. It was tense. It was fun. That's brilliant, brilliant television. And I'm doing the British thing. Brilliant. Like, that's how I talk, by the way. Like, I, I stole, I think, Howdy from Texas is fun. I think Brilliant from the UK is awesome. Um, winning Monaco, though, is the kind of thing you dream about as a child. So... Watching Sergio Perez cry on the podium at Monaco as they played the Mexican national anthem. That's a beautiful moment. I'm sure for Checo, that's one of the highlights of his life. That's the kind of moment when you have a victory like that in life. You think of the people who helped get you there. You think of all the people you wish you could tell. Like I, When I have a victory like that in life, I think of my little brother who died. And I go, man, I wish I could tell him about this moment. I don't know if Sergio Perez has ever lost anyone close to him. I'm sure if he did, he thought of them in that moment and said, I wish I could have shared this with blah, blah, blah. I wish my grandpa could see me today. I wish whatever, whoever that person is for him. By the way, Sergio Perez is now the most successful, successful Mexican driver ever. Like that, the way he did it today, it's so cool. He's got more wins. It's awesome. I'm so happy for him. And I just think of where Checo started. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm so glad Red Bull gave him a chance. Does anyone remember at the end of 2020 where he was at? He lost his seat at Racing Point. And, man, I remember thinking, like, this guy might be out of form of the one. And that's so awful because he's clearly a talented driver. Red Bull gave him a chance. And, and man, they really have won a lot together. And this is – it's just huge, man. I'm glad to see Checo get the recognition he deserves, winning Monaco – He's one of the few ever to do it. And it's just so cool to me. I'm so happy for him. It's a massive highlight of his life. And uh, well done, Checo. Now, Ferrari. Ferrari started the day 1-2 uh, on the grid. And for Charles Leclerc to start the day on pole and then finish the race in fourth, that's a massive missed opportunity. But like that, oh my gosh, it's so bad. And for Ferrari, it's been a year of missed opportunities. Just time and time again, I feel like they have victory and they squander it. And on lap 21, Charles Leclerc was told to pit. And then at the last moment, Ferrari tried to hold him back and said, oh, no, no, stay out. But it was too late. He was already in pit lane. And he lost his big lead. Like, how does that, how do you have a miscommunication like that? How does, it, how do these things happen over and over again to Ferrari? And at what point do we start asking the question, is this mismanagement by Mattia Bonotto, the Ferrari team principal? Ferrari built a good car. They, they probably should be leading Formula One, but they keep missing opportunities over and over again. There's still a long season ahead. It's not all been on the car. I mean, remember Carlos Sainz spun out once, and there's been problems here and there, but 
the reality is that Ferrari keeps shooting themselves in the foot one way or another. They keep finding ways to lose races. And it's like, man, how is this possible? They've clearly got a great car. And, and Ferrari just, it, it, just keep getting in their own way, and it's not good for them at all. Now, the fun of this race was the tension and the tire strategy. The wet weather really provided fun, you know, the conditions provided fun drama. Now, there was one moment that made me nervous. Uh, lap 27, Mick Schumacher uh, wiped out, had a really bad crash. He walked away totally fine. But they didn't red flag the event immediately. And there was a moment where they waited until the car was recovered. Then they realized, hey, we got to put out a red flag to fix the barrier. But they were lifting this car out on a crane. There are also marshals like right along the track sweeping and helping out. And cars are going by on the track around this corner near them. And I don't know if I'm the only person who saw this and thought of this. Maybe I'm overdramatic. I, I don't know. I, I saw this, though, and I thought of uh, Jules Bianchi. And ever since that crash, I watched that video, and I'm like, oh. And, and seeing marshals. Here are the factors. You see marshals along the track, a car suspended in the air while cars are driving by. It makes me nervous. I go, we have a history of this. This isn't cool. This isn't good. If one driver had brake failure or ran off the track, it, well, it was wet conditions, it would have been a really big mess. And I just wonder if I was the only person watching that recovery of the car going like, haven't we done this? This is really, I'm cringing a little bit. Like, I don't, can we just red flag it? I know we're behind. I know we're way behind schedule, but am I the only one who, let me know if you're the only, if I'm the only person watching who, this who thought of that crash and was like, ooh. Are we sure we don't want to red flag it? I don't know. Uh, I also thought Esteban Ocon got an unfair penalty. He was ahead in a corner. Lewis Hamilton was being super aggressive behind him, trying to make a move inside, which wasn't really there. They made contact. Esteban Ocon got a five-second penalty. It seemed like, how do I, seemed like bull shark to me. We'll say bull shark. Um, that's a thing. They have him in Hawaii. Um it looked like good defensive driving the way the whole time. It, it was actually fun and tense. You saw Lewis Hamilton chasing down Ocon and, you know, Ocon just taking up as much of the track as he could, not letting Lewis Hamilton pass. And I think Lewis Hamilton kind of annoys me a little bit where he whines when people race him really hard, but then he drives like a total a-hole. It's hypocrisy to me. I just, I really don't like, there's a, a bit of Lewis Hamilton that, it's a bit of a complainer in him where things don't go his way and he kind of pouts and it must, it must be unfairness. It must be BS. It's like, I don't know that Esteban Akon did anything wrong there and I didn't like seeing him get a penalty at all. It wasn't cool to me. Uh, now, George Russell got another top five finish and we're at the point now. We're seven races in. The points don't lie. Like scoreboard, I'm sorry, George Russell is the best driver at Mercedes. George Russell has 84 points. Lewis has 50 and George is massively outperforming Lewis Hamilton. And you're just like, without... So in previous years, Lewis Hamilton had a team behind him. He had a lesser driver in the number two spot, Valtteri Botas. And any time Botas was challenging Lewis or any time there was anything going on, Mercedes would tell Valtteri Botas to back off. And they would not allow Botas to outperform Lewis Hamilton. I don't know if that was even possible, but if it was, we would have never found out because they had the team vehemently supporting Lewis and not allowing anyone to challenge him. Well, the car isn't as good, and George Russell is it's just outperforming Lewis week in and week out. We're seven races in now. It's a big enough sample size to me where I'm like, I think he's the best driver at Mercedes. I, I'm not trying to jump the gun. I, I'm not I know I've been critical of Lewis at times. I, I actually love the guy. I think people think I don't like him. I just I try to play it, you know, shoot straight and be honest. Um, and right now, George Russell's the best driver at Mercedes. Now, here are the driver's standings after Monaco. In first place, you got Max Verstappen with 125 points. In second place, still, you got Charles Leclerc with 116 points. I thought this was the race where they were going to flip-flop. I mean, I really felt like Max started the race in fourth. And that's where Charles Leclerc started the race in first. Leclerc ended in fourth, getting fewer points than Max Verstappen. That should have never happened. So Max Verstappen's in first right now with the driver's standings, 125 points. Charles Leclerc in second with 116 points. Then he has Sergio Perez in third with 110 points. George Russell in fourth with 84 points. 
In fifth, you got Carlos Sainz with 83 points. And in sixth, Lewis Hamilton has 50 points. In the driver's standings, or the constructor, sorry, in the team standings, or the constructor's standings, Red Bull remained in first with 235 points. Ferrari is in second with 195, 199 points. I go back to my Ferrari had a one two start. They had an opportunity here to get all the points today and make a big move and, and make a jump towards Red Bull. And instead, Red Bull got more points today than Ferrari. That's a huge victory for Red Bull and a huge loss for Ferrari. In third, Mercedes is kind of all alone. They've got 134 points. Then a big gap between Mercedes and fourth with McLaren, who has 59 points. All around, I thought it was... All I care about really is entertainment. And we got a really entertaining race weekend in Monaco. Uh, one of the better Monaco races in a while. There, all, there has to be a twist at Monaco. If there's not rain or something that happens, it's actually not a very interesting race. It's just kind of some prestige and a weird little tiny country and a very beautiful location. Um, but the rain and wet conditions made it really, really exciting, really, really interesting this weekend, and especially you know Sunday with the race. Uh, the next race is in two weeks, June 12th. You've got, uh, it's at Baku, Azerbaijan. So that'll be interesting and exciting. And uh, I hope you enjoyed Monaco as much as I did. Checo Perez, man, holy crap. I loved watching him win. I was so happy. Um, does anyone not like Sergio Perez? He's the most likable driver out there. I just really, really love the guy. I mean, there's a lot of likable drivers. It's pretty cool to see. Like you watch Max talking to Carlos Sainz and, Sergio Perez after the race. There's really no animosity. It's a lot of friendly people out on the grid. Um, I love Carlos Sainz too, man. Like, there's a lot of people out there to love in Formula One. A lot of people to root for and cheer for. I, I really enjoy it. Um, and I hope you enjoyed Monaco as much as I did.